Yes, I'm pulling books out of the box they were shipped in. So Sami Chan sent them and I'm having fun. But I can tell you the Golden Book playlist is going to explode by the time we're done. And today's book is sticking together with another book. It is hard to do this with gloves. <laughs> Sorry, internet, you're not getting my fingerprints. Today's book is The Runaway Squash. What? Oh. Sounds interesting. And that cover looks pretty easy to edit. Yay! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room, brought to you by generous book donations. I've really been looking forward to reading this one because, seriously, apparently I'm not up to date on American folk tales. So today is a little golden book, The Runaway Squash. An American folktale. Let's just have a quick guess of what this book may actually be about before we get going. My guess is it's... The reason it says American folktale is it's not a folktale about the runaway squash. The runaway squash is just the reason we're going to do a hop around America for folktales. Because they have a globe on here and what looks to be a green planet or pea maybe because there's also an orange one. They, there's a propeller on one of them, and there's a flag on top of the other, and the art is nice, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's very, um, uh, Saturday morning cartoon, uh, give me a skin here. Very schoolhouse rock is how I would put it. All right. Retold by Gail Wearsome. Illustrated by Bunky. Yes, it just says Bunky. I kind of like that. Hmm. Adapted from Big Blue Marble. Which is why this said bl Big Blue Marvel on the cover, apparently. Hmm. The creation and production of Big Blue Marble is funded by International Telephone and Telegraph Corporation. Big Blue Marble. That's from 1976. That explains why the book was 49 cents. Wow. Jimmy was as perky as a robin in May. He hoed his garden and he watered his plants. While he worked, he sang his favorite song. Squash, squash, grow, grow, grow. You're the greatest treat I know. Somebody hasn't met chocolate. <laughs> Sometimes he thought he just might burst if he didn't get some squash to eat pretty soon. At last, he sat down to rest. And just for the record, I do like squash. I like squash, too. Also, that's very perky and the style actually reminds me of like just the way his face is shaped how the hands work and his overall pose like reminded me of these old 3d anim some of the first 3d animations i've ever seen hmm also cute duck oh yes very cute nicely rendered duck it, it looks fuzzy it looks how cute and fuzzy they are oh yeah i guess we should say duckling ah yes clink 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 down the road came a peddler pushing a cart full of pots and pans. Howdy, young fellow, said the peddler. Mighty pretty garden you have there. Thank you kindly, sir, said Jimmy, staring at the strange cart. Do you sell pots and pans? I sure do, son. Percival Peabody's the name. Peabody's Pots and Pans, the peddler said proudly. You look very hot and thirsty, Mr. Peabody. Have a drink of cool water, Jimmy suggested. Is your tongue okay? <laughs> she didn't have any trouble saying it i'm just that's the thing i would have easily tripped over it's much easier than the pickled and preserved from S scrooge and mickey mouse and the lot plot i'm really digging this art it's i would say it almost has like a cutout quality like someone drew it on pieces of paper and then turned the pieces of paper to like the leg was turned kind of like those um Give me a second. Uh, scarecrows during Halloween? Yeah, the posable um, art pieces. Yeah, it has like that quality about it, but doesn't. It's like it's more well rendered than that. It's just, it's very nice. It's like you could cut it on cardboard and put it up on your wall and it would look really good. After drinking, the peddler bowed grandly. Thank you, and now I have something to give you for being so thoughtful. He handed Jimmy a large, round, red seed. Thank you, sir, said Jimmy. What is it? That, my boy, is the seed of the runaway squash, replied the peddler. 
I got it from the Raja of Runaway on my last trip to the wondrous east. Okay. Jimmy dropped the seed into a hole and covered it well with dirt. That's it, boy. Plant it. Plant it and get out of the way, warned the peddler. How long will it take to sprout, Mr. Peabody? asked Jimmy. The peddler didn't answer. I can see why. Also, it just hit me why it has this quality. I think they're... Don't take this as me criticizing the artist. It's actually a valid technique. I think they traced real photos. Could have. Because it has that quality about it. It's also called rotoscro rotoscroping in the business when you're talking about animation. Because I don't think um, they traced these exact people in outfits. I think what they did is they took pictures of people in poses and then drew over them and then drew the outfits and stuff over those people. Possible. Jimmy turned to face the peddler. Why, he's gone, Jimmy exclaimed in surprise. Suddenly, something lifted Jimmy off the ground. He looked down and found he was sitting on top of a huge vine. And there, at the tip of the vine, was the most beautiful squash in the world. Oh, oh, gasped Jimmy as the vine started to stretch out. He wrapped his arms around the squash and hung on tightly. Hang on for dear life, boy. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. The vine grew towards Jimmy's house. It scrambled through a window, wiggled across the living room, and whisked up the chimney. On the way, it picked up Jimmy's dog, and then left him stranded on the roof. Ouch. Sorry, Tenny, yelled Jimmy as he and the squash kept on going. Is this like an American version of James and... Um, James and the Giant Peach or Jack and the Beanstalk? Jack and the Beanstalk is what I was actually going for. Also, those are very nicely rendered squash leaves and squash blossoms. Those are exactly what those look like. Very nicely done. Poor Tinny. Yeah. Uh, it's probably tiny, but I like Tinny better. Jimmy looked ahead and saw that he and the vine were approaching a neighbor's farm. Chickens scurried out of their path as they drew closer. The vine swept through the barn. Moo, ba, cluck, squawk. Farmer Freddy Fern ran from his house to see what all the noise was about. He saw the vine carrying off the squash and Jimmy and two of his chickens. Stop, thief, he roared. Sorry, shouted Jimmy. He shooed the two chickens off the vine as it raced down the road toward town. Crazy. The art has this quality about it. It's so nicely done. Things are well rendered. They have personality, motion. Minimal amount of outlines, which is interesting to say with the theory that this could possibly have involved some tracery. As the vine grew longer and longer, the squash grew bigger and bigger. When the vine, the squash, and Jimmy zigzagged into town, there was great excitement at every zig and every zag. The widow Winkle was hanging up her wash when she heard a rustling noise behind her. The vine had climbed over her fence and was flippity-flopping across her yard. Help! she squealed as she ran toward the house. The vine gathered up the clothesline, clothes and all. Sorry! Jimmy shouted, hanging on with one hand while tossing the wet clothes back into the yard. Ooh, Kitty's not happy. Oh, no, I'm thinking that's a tabby. At least based on the rough patterning. It would still be a kitty. Yep. I was just trying to guess which type. Oh, just look at her. Ah! It's like, oh, Jim Bob. <laughs> ah. What's really interesting is there's this rough sketch quality to the fence here, but you don't see that with the squash. Well, the squash is kind of the star. You know, it kind of get, got title credit. Hmm. So, you know, it has some plot armor. <laughs> they whizzed down Main Street and into the barber shop. Barber Billy Beard was busy shaving a customer. He stared in amazement at the huge vine, forgetting all about the man being shaved. As Jimmy flew by, he saw that the unlucky man in the chair now had only half a mustache. Sorry, Jimmy yelled, holding fast to the vine as he and the squash sped on. Wow. 
Yeah. Also, that's a classic. Also, the motion lines there and the half mustache and the classic barbershop razor's blade. Wow. I'm like, these artists, I, want, I would love to like interview this guy and, or gal. Whomever. Funky. Yeah. No clue. Down the street they zipped and then into the general store. Jimmy held on with all his strength. Miss Marion Muffet had just finished stacking a tall display of canned tomatoes. That always means it's going to get knocked down. It's kind of like, oh, this building's so important. Wouldn't it be awful if it blew up? Next scene, oh no, it blew up. We didn't see that coming, now did we? <laughs> What's this? She screamed. Go away, she shouted. But it was no use. The vine, the squash, and Jimmy charged straight through the store. The cans crashed to the floor. Miss Marion ran after them, shaking her fist. Sorry, shouted Jimmy, and on he raced. Soon the vine covered the entire town. Tendrils curled in and out of windows, doors, and chimneys. Leaves blanketed yards and porches. And there, right up at the front of it all, were Jimmy and the giant squash. I like the sense of scale in this picture here. Though it also almost feels like it's a toy town. A little bit. And you can tell the artist used um, perspective lines and stuff like that because of how nice the buildings are rendered and how there's a solid quality about them. You get that from really nice, straight, crisp lines and using converging lines and stuff like that. Suddenly, the squash began to tremble. From deep inside came a rumble like thunder. Oh my, something's happening, said Jimmy in a shaky voice still clinging to the squash. I think it's going to... Bang! The most beautiful squash in the world exploded. Huge pieces rained down. Jimmy crashed to the ground as the whole town disappeared under piles and hills and mountains of squash. It'll be a long time before I eat another squash, no matter how much I like it, vowed Jimmy. Yeah, I was just thinking that myself. It's be careful what you wish for. But this is a bad time to say you're not going to eat squash for a while because there's a whole town worth of squash and you don't want to be wasteful. And for a second there, I thought these pieces, these round pieces you see were like gold coins or something. That would be cool, but I bet they're seeds. Nobody plant those. Yeah. Even though they don't look anything like the seed that Jimmy was given. Yeah. Why, why take chances? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. No matter how much, he shouted, he shook his head and tossed and turned. Oh, God. Then he woke up. No matter... Uh, what? said Jimmy. He opened his eyes, and there he was, lying in his very own garden. I've been asleep, he said. It was only a dream. He smiled, then laughed to himself. But almost at once, his smile disappeared. Clink, clank, clank. Something was coming down the road. What's that? He wondered. Then he saw what was causing the noise. It was a peddler, and he was pushing a cart full of pots and pans. The peddler waved to Jimmy and said, Hello, young man. That sure is a nice garden. Jimmy shivered. He twitched. He blinked his eyes 14 times and covered his head. Oh, no, not again, he exclaimed. He ran into his house, locked the door, pulled down the shades, and hid under the bed. Hmm, said the peddler. How very strange. All I wanted was a drink of water. This is, this is back before this became a trope. Yes, I, I would like to point out that this book was published in the 70s and was adapted from another book that was would have to be published before this one. Though I gotta say they set up the trope very nicely. You always have to start this trope with someone being tired and then something happens before they get to rest or something because them being tired is actually the transition of them falling asleep uh, we didn't really have that here well you just say he's being he's tired or the... well he said at last he sat down to rest but then he was talking to the peddler so but the art for this book is fantastic the art is fun i i don't really know that there's a lesson here D don't take stuff from strangers would be a good one. Yeah, I'm thinking it's mostly um, be careful what you wish for, that classic one, because he wished he could eat a squash soon, 
and then he dreamed about a giant squash, and then he had no. Yeah, maybe. Uh, this has been The Runaway Squash, an American folk tale, retold by Gail Wearsome, illustrated by Bunky, adapted from Big Blue Marble. I wonder if it's only part of a story from the book or whatever. The Big Probably, because it says adapted from. Because I would bet that the Big Blue Marble has to be much longer than this, otherwise why go to the effort to making it a golden book? Also, wasn't quite done with the credits. Brought to Ember's Reading Room by viewers. Thank you, Sasami-chan. Yes, thank you. You are wonderful. Awesome. Love your comments as always. Also, new people, if you're watching this, hello, welcome. <laughs> Don't be intimidated by how long the comments get sometimes. Whatever you want to say, as long as it's nice and doesn't include any uh, vulgar language, is very welcome. Once again, thank you for listening. If we can find a copy of this book, we'll put an Amazon link up. Probably we'll have other links there as well. Thanks again for listening.